Hi guys, it's Karen, how are you? I'm gonna try to do something different and I'm gonna try to do two of my favorite things at the same time. So I'm not sure how this is gonna work. I don't have a professional microphone. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, as most of you know that follow me, I love flowers and I have fresh flowers around all the time. So I wanted to do my blog today about open-mindedness while I do my flowers. So let's give it a try. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about flowers at the same time. <laughs> I don't know how people do this, but I'm gonna try it. So what I did was I bought some flowers from um, the store. I went to Trader Joe's. A lot of you have seen my vlogs where I go to Trader Joe's and I buy a bunch of flowers, usually on Monday. And I pick out whatever I like. I happen to have gotten these beautiful tulips and I got quite a few of them. I'm gonna do a couple different things with them. Now tulips, I don't know if you knew this about tulips, but you can either take tulips and when they're closed like this, you can either keep them really tight together and put them in a tight container, really tight. And what will happen is in a couple days, they will just open up and they will just be the most beautiful bouquet on their own. You don't have to do any arranging. Or another way, which I also like very much, is using a bigger container like this, fill it full of fresh cold water, which I already did. And then I put in one of these packets of flower food. And if you don't have one of these packets of flower food, you could also use 7-Up or Sprite. Pour that, a little bit of 7-Up or Sprite in there for the flower food. And then to keep it from the bacteria from building in the stems, if you don't have that, I know this is crazy, I'm a recovering alcoholic and I'm telling you this secret, but if, if you put in a, like a cap full of vodka, it keeps the water completely clean, kills the bacteria. Imagine what it does to you in your stomach. Anyway, so I'm gonna put these in and this one is gonna be a real loose one. I'm just gonna put it in loosely and it's gonna kind of fall over and it's gonna open up in a couple days and it's gonna be really pretty. The other thing you can do is if you don't like tulips because as soon as you put them in the vase, they start falling over. If you put about three pennies in the bottom of the container, it will keep them standing upright, the copper in it, okay? See all these things you didn't know? Um, but these I want to fall over. And what I'll do is I'll, in a couple days, I'll post a picture on stories and you can see what they look like. But I just uh, take them out. I got the water prepared. I'm gonna prepare the leaves and cut them. And I'm gonna tell you about open-mindedness, okay? And why open-mindedness is so important. So there are three things that you cannot get sober without. It's open-mindedness, willingness, and honesty. In the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, it says that these are indispensable. What that means, what does indispensable means? Kind of find the height that you want, cut them, cut them with nice sharp scissors, clean scissors, and cut them at an angle, okay? You can always cut off more. So that's pretty good, that's what I want. Um, so what does indispensable mean? You know how you go to a pharmacy and they dispense meds? You know, the pharmacist gives you the meds? Well, that's, if something is dispensable, it's given out. And if it's indispensable, it can't be given out. So honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness are indispensable. You have to show up to Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, uh, Gamblers Anonymous, Crystal Meth Anonymous, wherever you're going for help, a 12-step program. Um, you have to bring that, okay? Now the problem with, um, first let me tell you, when I listed up all those 12-step programs, the 12 steps are the same in all of those programs. People feel more comfortable talking about their own drug of choice. So they go to a 12-step meeting that other drug addicts are at or other gamblers are at. It doesn't really matter as long as you're going and you're doing the steps. Um, I know a lot of old school AA meetings only let you identify as an alcoholic. I don't know why that is. In the big book, they talk about drugs. Bill and Bob were drug users. Everybody knows if you're an alcoholic. 
You will use anything to feel better, whether it's drugs, ice cream, <laughs> anything, right? So I don't think there's any, you know, any difference. But people feel more comfortable sharing about those things with people that are, that one just broke. So that's gonna be the length it is, okay? I'm just gonna mix those together. Um, I think they're kind of long and pretty like that. Anyway, um, so when you go to Alcoholics Anonymous or any 12-step program, the reason you go there is because you want help. What you're doing has not worked. And it, it ceases, never ceases to amaze me that people go to 12-step programs and then when someone tells them, okay, this is what, what we did to recover, and people go, oh, I don't wanna do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. Well, you said you'd do anything to stay sober. Well, I'll do anything but that, right? There's an old song by Meatloaf. If you're too young to know who Meatloaf is, go to Apple Music or Google Music Store and search Meatloaf. I would do anything for love but I won't do that. That song always reminds me of alcoholics and addicts. Um, you know, I'll do anything, but I won't do that. So, you, you, your life's on fire, your 411, you know, is, is told you go to a 12-step program and you go, okay, if that's what you say I should do. And you go in there and they start telling you, hey, this is what we did to recover. And you go, I'm not doing that. I'm different, it's not, that's not gonna work for me, right? You don't understand, you don't get it. I'm special, I'm different. You're not special, you're not different, right? The problem is, is that you suffer from a mental illness called alcoholism, and what that does is it makes it so that your thinking is the problem, right? And so if you are, your thinking is the problem, then that explains why you think that you don't need to do that. Your own mind is trying to kill you. And it's trying to tell you that you're different and you don't have to do what everybody else has done. That's a problem. It's impossible to help someone that doesn't have an open mind. I often say that, you know, we come in to AA and we've got this vision and it's like this, right? We see everything out of this little teeny tiny thing and that's the way we see it, period. Let me see if I zoom back in. Let me see if I can zoom it in if you can see me a little better. Is this thing zoom in? Sorry, this is my first time doing it. No, it doesn't zoom in. Okay, <laughs> I hope you can see me and hear me. Anyway, um, so you go to Alcoholics Anonymous and you need help and you're, you, know, you, you see everything just like this, right? This blinders on. And then they tell you, hey, can you be open-minded to this and see something different? And you say, no, because this is what I see. And then they ask you again and you say, okay, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit, you know, maybe, oh my God, oh my God, I see, right? It's not that you were wrong, you only saw part of the picture. It's the same thing like if I have this book, right? If I have this cookbook and I ask you, you know, let me get closer to you. If I ask you, um, do you see a woman? And you say, yes, I see a woman. And I say, no, there's no woman. There's no woman here. There's no woman. Yes, there's a woman. Well, I'm looking right at it. And there's no woman here, right? I'm seeing this side and you're saying this side. Does it mean you're wrong? No. Does it mean I'm wrong? No. That's open-mindedness, right? That I'm not saying I'm wrong, but I'm open-minded enough to give what you're saying a try, to consider that you might be right. That's open-mindedness. And when you, the only way to get open-mindedness is to be completely and utterly beaten into a state of reasonableness by alcoholism. You have to be really ready to let go of your own ideas. Um, before you'll say, okay, you know, maybe there is a woman in this page. So that's why you have to be open-minded. You have to be open to new ideas. Your ideas are not working. That's what you gotta get through your head. Your thoughts and ideas just don't work and you need something new. 
So you're going to have to humble yourself a little bit. There's an old saying my friend says all the time that when you get sober, the ego is the last to go and the first to come back. And I believe that. Totally, utterly believe that. Uh, when you get sober, it's hard to let go of ego that I'm right, you're wrong, you're to blame, everyone's to blame but me. I'm a victim. And uh, to be open-minded enough to say some, see something different. You know, Chuck Chamberlain, if you know who Richard Chamberlain was an actor, and his father's name was Chuck Chamberlain, and Chuck Chamberlain got sober. Boy, that's pretty. See, they're just gonna kind of fall over. Can you see that? Just gonna kind of fall over the base. I'm gonna move these out of the way, and I'm gonna put them up on the bar here, and I will let you see them when they're on the bar, but they're just gonna hang prettily all over this little base, and they'll be very pretty. So let's put those out, and I'll show you in a minute what they're gonna look like. And, uh, Anyway, so Chuck Chamberlain talks about um, a new pair of glasses in his book. It's called A New Pair of Glasses. It's a great book. And it really is uh, along the same lines as what I talk about all the time, a shift in perception. You have to see things differently. It's like putting on a new pair of glasses, right? You've had these glasses on and this is the way you see your life. And we're asking you to put on a new pair of glasses, right? Be open-minded to see that there's another way. Okay, so open-mindedness, it's key. So let me show you these. These I absolutely adore. These are calla lilies, but I've never seen that color before. Do you see that? Those are not plastic, those are real. And they're so dark purple that they're almost black. I wish I could find these at Halloween time because they'd make a fantastic Halloween bouquet, but I think they're just so stunning. So, you know, I don't have anything really fantastic to do with this. This is not big time, you know, um, flower arranging class. This is me putting out flowers uh, like I always do because I love fresh flowers. But I have a couple different bases here. I thought this would be fun. Look at this red one. Right? Wouldn't that be fun to put these calla lilies in that? Let's put a little food in there. You know, when you get sober and you start to have these shifts in your perception and you start to see things differently, they're, you hear people talk about them. They're like aha moments. They're moments where you go, ah. And you can't see them by yourself. And a lot of people go to therapists and psychiatrists trying to get these shifts in their perception. And you can talk until you're blue in the face with someone. And they are not going to get it. But if you put them in a meeting, an AA room, with other people, AA, NA, Al-Anon, Amazing. Very pretty. I think I was going to put some of them. I wonder what they look like in here. I got this base too, a, purple, a blue one. Oh, I think I kind of like them better in the blue one. Yeah, I think I do. And I think I'm going to put them all together. I was going to put them in two bases, but I really pretty. Okay, so you go to AA and you sit there and you listen to people. Sometimes you sit there and you just, they just drone on and on and on and you think, oh my God, what are they talking about? When are they going to finish? And all of a sudden, someone shares and you hear something new, and it's like, oh my God, I get it. I see it. Why didn't someone tell me this before? Well, you probably couldn't hear it before. And maybe it wasn't your open-minded, but maybe it's just that you weren't ready yet. Let's put these in and see how these look. There's a few rocks in the bottom of this base, and they kind of help me stand them up a little more, because these ones I don't want to just hang over. I want to actually have this black and turquoise look. This one's gonna be a little crazy here. I don't want that to... When you have these straggly things on there, like the splits, They'll cause bacteria in the water. 
and that makes your your stems all get really bleh, funky and icky. So let's do this. And uh, you can hear things in meetings. You can see alcoholism easier in someone else than you can see it in yourself. You can see codependency easier in someone else. You can see every you know drug addiction or self pity. Uh, you know, I saw this, I was on this meeting the other day and there was this guy on there and he was sharing and I, I, you know, I do believe it was a sad thing he was sharing, but he was in so much self-pity. I don't think it was all at all about his mother, which is what he was crying about. It was about him. And that's the difference between self-pity and sadness, you know, but if you're not ready to see that, someone could be talking to you and talking to you and talking to you and you are not going to get it. That's why I love meetings. And people say, well, I don't have to go to meetings. I don't need to go to meetings. Oh, you'll hear. And I think God talks to people. You know what I mean? So you might be praying for an answer to something. And he's answering you. But it's coming from Joe, the guy sitting in the corner at the meeting. So you got to go to meetings. So you can see things about yourself. Sorry, I'm off screen. You'll understand why when we're done here. Few more tulips. I gotta get. I'm, I've ordered one of these things where the camera follows you around the room, so that you can see what I'm doing. But until it comes, I'm gonna do it like this. So I want another vase for these. I want another vase for these, but I don't have one. So I want to finish what I'm saying and then I'll finish my flowers. You get the idea. Um. Maybe what I'll do with these is I'll do a, a base that's really tight and I'll put some pennies in the bottom so you can see in a couple days the one that's real loose and the one that's real tight and see how those open up. Beautiful. Anyway, so um, meetings are the place where you can see things. Meetings are the place, you know, especially as alcoholic addicts, we are so defensive all the time. We are like, uh, that's not me, I'm not that way. I remember when I first got to Alcoholics Anonymous, they told me I was selfish and self-centered, and I was like, ah, oh, not me. <laughs> I'm a giver, you know? And it was only when I sat and listened to people talk that I could really hear the selfishness, and I could see it in myself. But if it would have been someone sitting across from me trying to tell me, I would have been like, you are out of your mind. Um, and there's so many things like that that I've learned and it, it's because the mind is sick and it wants to blame, it wants to rationalize and it wants to justify. And so getting to a place of open mindedness has taken me a long time. It's my favorite saying is I don't know. I never said that before. I really did the 12 steps and now I can say, I don't know. I don't know. You know, a lot of times people will contact me and say, what do you think I should do about this? And I say, I don't know, what do you think? You know? And then I'll tell them where it's at in the big book. And I'll say, well, this is what it says in the big book. And usually the big book is like 100% right. <laughs> so what I want to do now is I think I'm going to take my phone off the, the um, tripod and I'll show you what I've done so far. And we'll come back and look at them in a couple days as well. Thanks for listening, everybody. Let me see if I can do this. I have no idea if this video even turned out because I've never done this before. And I might just video it anyway or tape it anyway. I don't even know how to turn this around. I don't even know what that button's for. <laughs> Can't turn it around. Maybe I'll show you this way. So here's some roses I did the other day in a square vase, which I think are really pretty. And then there's the calla lilies. I don't know, can you see those? I've got my camera turned around the wrong way. And then here's those, those tulips. So I have a lot of tech work to do. I have to get that camera that follows me around and I have to figure out how well I'm recording to flip this camera around so that you can see things. And I don't even know if I just showed you the bar stools or the flowers. Thanks for watching. I love you all. Have a great day.